What's going on, everybody? It's Halfway Nuts. Welcome to Starfield. This is the premium edition of the game, so that means I was able to start playing it on the 1st of September. I think I already have something like 15 hours into the game, but what I'm going to do for this video is just start a new game, and I think I'm going to play it from the very beginning until we leave the first planet, so that'll take us all the way through the intro and into the first uh, combat, and then once we get on the frontier starship, that'll be the end of this video, and then we'll move on to other things. Now, before I start a new game, let's do talk about a couple things. So, for the audio, the music is turned all the way off, just because I'm not trying to get caught up in any copyright issues. For the display, motion blur and depth of field are turned off. I never did care much for them when I was playing Fallout 4, so it's nice that you can turn them on and off in this game. For the gameplay, the difficulty is currently on easy, just because at the moment I kind of suck. So I will turn this up at some point, but right now it's on easy. And for those who are curious, I'm playing this on Xbox Series S. So let's go ahead and start a new game. Now this is actually my sixth time, I'm pretty sure, starting a new game. Uh, the playthrough that, that I decided to go with was the fifth time starting it. And basically what I did was I played the game from the start up until you reach the lodge at uh, Constellation in New Atlantis. And I basically just wanted to watch a bunch of other people's YouTube videos to make sure I was getting off to a good start. Plus, I just wanted to get a feel for how the game played. It's kind of like Fallout 4 in a lot of ways, but it has some some oddities to it. We'll talk about that later. Seals are good. Oxygen's good. Just do what you did last time, and you're fine. Follow my one simple rule. Hella, what's my one simple rule? Listen to Lynn. Boss lady knows best. Exactly. Listen to me. Mining's just like any other job. Go steady, go safe, go home with a pocket full of credits at the end of the day. Yeah, totally. It's just like, um, yeah, I work in the Stardock. Except, uh, with more cave-ins, lasers, and accidental dismemberment. Very helpful. Thank you. Ah, you're gonna be fine. Your first outing was solid. And, you know, let's be honest, it ain't exactly astrophysics. That's why I keep him around. Good pep talks. Yeah. And the fact that I can pinpoint a helium deposit from 300 meters. <laughs> Not untrue. A shame we won't find any down here. But the metal deposits alone should pay for our own helium. Hell, after this, we'll have enough jump fuel to bounce from one end of the settled systems to the next. Hey, more minerals, more money. And so the cycle repeats itself. Just no more unauthorized jumps in a house for rune space, okay? He's just a big baby. There are worse lives. You know, most Dusties don't even make it this far. I have a good feeling about you. A uh, group hug now or at the end of the shift? <sighs> One of these days, Hella, I am going to leave you behind. Promises, promises. I always did think the intro to the game was very abrupt and kind of dry, if I'm being honest, but... Hey, okay. it's whatever. Let's see what we've got. How are we on time? A uh, little longer. Grab some samples? Always. Uh, but not you. Check on Isabel. Make sure she eases up on the breach. I don't feel like getting buried alive today. Roger that. Remember, Dusty. Keep your breathing steady. And never take that helmet off down here. Oxygen processors don't extend this far. Yeah, because God forbid we drill on a rock with breathable atmosphere. Know what I love about working in Freestar Collective Space? Fewer regs. A job like this in the United Colonies? <laughs> Dreams of red tape. Ugh. Look at 
this one over here. Calvert! No! Ah, no, no, no! It's a laser, not a sledgehammer! Ease up! Benning, if you got paid per break, you'd be a millionaire! Let's go! Yeah, yeah, okay. What do we say, Dusty? You make your cut, you get your cut. No exceptions. Come on, pick it up! Troy, what's the yield? Minimal at this point. Occasional glimmer, but it's weak. What do you think? Stay the course? No, ma'am. Juice ain't worth the squeeze. Well, okay then. Let's call this one tapped. Why don't you move over to that big vein we looked at? Yes, ma'am. One thing Bethesda did really well with this game is to demonstrate depth perception. Like when we just started, there were these huge cave walls that went up like multiple stories, and you could tell how expansive it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like even through here, you really get a sense of how big this place is. Uh, you think we'll be done here soon? Now I hear this is the last dig. One thing that's kind of cool, a really nice attention to detail is if you walk in front of these cutters, they'll stop instead of like chewing your legs off. How they sucker you to join? Fall for the fancy pamphlets? Admittedly, after I got out of this cave, I actually haven't done much mining on planets. I mean, maybe I just haven't really needed the resources yet, but this is basically the only time I've done this in my, like, 15, 16 hours of playing this. I'm sure I'll do a lot more of it in the future, but right now, it's not, honestly, not much. They're ready, boss. Get back up here. You got a few more digs to go before I feel like talking to you. One thing that's interesting about the start of the game before you reach the character creator is that you can't switch to third person and you also can't quick save or save the game. I just think the, the detail in this cave is amazing. Anyway, but yeah, that's some weird stuff that, that you can't do. Like, you can't quick save right before the character creator in case you want to start over. You have to start the entire game over again. So the first time you're able to save is after you get out of the character creator, which I think is kind of a missed opportunity. I feel like Bethesda could have given you the option to quick save before you get into character creator, but whatever. Let's go! Hella, get the readings. Yeah, about that. Problem? Uh, not if you consider a spike in gravity readings a problem. I don't. You don't? What we're after? It'll read as an anomaly. That's what I was told, anyway. Okay, now you're starting to freak me out. Relax. It's just another job. Come on. We're getting close, I think. Yeah, everything is just... <laughs> Lynn, seriously, uh, there's something really effed up about this. Where is it, Hella? Through there, I think. Okay, you, you're up. Something goes wrong in there, we'll come get you. Uh, <laughs> why would anything go wrong? Would you shut up? Both of you do your jobs. Client is on his way. Gee, thanks. I've always wanted to be the first person to walk into the creepy cave. Holy crap. Actually, it's not, now I think about it, it's honestly not that far down. The first time I played this, I was worried that I was going to fall off of this, like, and go just, like, into the oblivion, but it's honestly not even that deep. I didn't even know that was there. It's the first time I've noticed that. It's not going to matter, because after this, I'm going to reload my, uh... After this, I'm just going to reload uh, the save I've been working on anyway.
Apparently you have to be really right up on things in order to mine them. Do you see anything? Yeah, I see something all right. There's your weird gravity ratings. like I'm on acid. Or maybe mushrooms? Ayahuasca, that's what it is. Hey, come on. Come on. Okay, take it easy. You were out cold. Uh, no physical damage. Mentally, the jury's still out. <laughs> you're funny. You know who you are? New recruit for Argos Extractors? Ring any bells? Any of this look familiar? And rather abruptly, we're in the character creator, so I kind of have it uh, written down what I made my character out of the first time, so we're just going to go through that and recreate it. So my personnel record was number 33. That's what I started out with. And let's move on to the body. I'm pretty sure I left all of this in its default position, except for the skin tone, which I backed down to number two because I don't have nearly that much of a tan. I'm borderline albino, if I'm being honest. Moving on to the face, the skin tone is number two. The head shape is number three. Now, one of the things I realized about hair when I started playing the game is <laughs> I am never going to have short hair ever in this game unless they patch it because when you're running around uh, just in the game, the level of detail on your body, your face, and your head is way lower than what you're looking at right now in the character creator. So if you have really short hair, like this, for example, even right now, you can kind of see through the hair, but when you're playing in third person, it's really bad. Like, you can see clear through your hair and onto your bare head. It's just... Like, come on, Bethesda, you could have done better than that. Now, oddly, the facial hair looks better than it did in the uh, in the Starfield Direct. I seem to remember people thinking the facial hair looked really bad. I think they kind of fixed that for the most part, but I don't know. Hair in this game is a is a touchy subject for me. So the one I picked to start out with was number thirty eight. Got kind of that 1980s Kurt Russell look about it. I kind of like that. Uh, hair color was left at default. Facial hair was number 12. That's what I started out with. I, Whenever I build a, a new character in Fallout or in this game, I tend to want my character to start out looking a little disheveled and honestly like they've seen better days. And then at some point, not too far into the game, I'll clean them up. And I just kind of like having that that transformation where later they're clean shaven and their hair is shorter. But they kind of start out looking a little bit like rough around the edges, I guess. For some reason, the facial hair color is 23, even though the hair color is 10. So I'm going to move this over to 10 just to make all the different hair colors on his face match. The eyes are number eight. Eye color is number six. Eyebrows is number three. Eyebrow color has to be backed down to 10 to make it match. Forehead is number three. 
The nose is number nine. Ears are number four. Cheeks are number three. The mouth is number eight. That is honestly the creepiest smile. Bethesda did a crap job at doing smiles in Starfield. It's almost like the the Terminator 2 smile. That's good. Maybe you could practice in front of a mirror or something. Anyway, moving on. So from teeth, we get on to jaw. That's default. Chin is number four. The neck is number five. No jewelry, no jewelry color. The derma aesthetic, whatever that is, uh, for this character, I moved all the way to number 50, just because I wanted the, there to be a little bit of a of detail in his face. I didn't want him to have a perfect looking face. Complexion color temp is default. Blemishes are default. Scars are number 14. And then I went through here and backed it all the way down to invisible and then moved it up one, two, three spots, I'm pretty sure. I wanted him to have a, a little bit of a scar, but one that looks like it's been there for a while. It's not a new injury. So that's kind of what I did with that. And then I'm pretty sure everything else was left at default. Yes, I believe it was. Moving on to the background. Now for background and traits, uh, I've heard some people talk about how they kind of want to have no background and no traits. I mean, you can do what you want. It's your RPG, but in my opinion, you should never just not utilize these because it's it's free upgrades and free skill points right as you start the game. Now, whenever, like I'm going to make a lot of references to Fallout. So for Fallout, people will tend to create like a sniper build or a stealth build or a or a commando build or something like that. I tend to prefer a more well-rounded character. And I'm also a kind of character that is a bit of a bullet sponge. Like, I don't do very strategic uh, FPS combat. I will tend to just run right up to enemies and just blast them at point-blank range, which is something I honestly need to work on because I've died quite a few times in this game. So f the background that I picked was Combat Medic, just for that reason. So this one gave me an automatic bump in pistol damage. It also made medicine work better for me. I think the med packs uh, do a bit more uh, health regeneration and they do it faster. And then wellness just basically raises your max health. So I decided to have these right out of the gate because I am that kind of a bullet sponge. I'll just run right up to enemies. Some other people who have started this game and have done reviews on it say that it's like absolutely critical which one you pick. I'm going to disagree with that. All this really does is give you three extra skill points, and this is just what you start with. So unless you pick a background that has skill points that you legitimately don't care about and are never going to use, all this really does is give you a head start on some of the skill points that you're going to pick anyway. Like I would probably upgrade at least a little bit pistols, medicine, and wellness either way. So, I may as well pick something. So, that's that. For the traits, uh, the, these are interesting for me because I tend to want to pick stuff that's going to have permanent and lasting effects. So, I didn't pick the dream home, for example, because at some point or another, I'll be able to buy a home. So, I really don't need to just have one from the very outset. For this playthrough, I picked Hero Worshipped, Kid Stuff, and Wanted. So let's talk about them for a second. Hero Worshipped is that goofy, adoring fan that uh, we've all seen, I'm sure, that just uh, gives him to you immediately as a free companion. I just kind of threw him on my starship, and whenever I 
go in and out of the ship or walk by him. He says a bunch of goofy stuff, but so far he hasn't been that useful. What I do think I'm going to benefit from, the reason I picked him is because he's basically a dog meat companion from Fallout 4. So if you remember right, dog meat, you could pretty much do whatever you wanted. You know, you could slaughter a bunch of innocent people if you wanted to, and dog meat isn't going to hate you for it, and neither does the adoring fan. So... If you want to have a companion with you, but you want to make some shady decisions, uh, that gives you a companion that you can run around with who's not going to, like, disown you, <laughs> I guess. And then kid stuff just gives you parents. Honestly, the reason I picked this is because I really value my parents in real life. I had parents that, uh, while they grew up in separate households and never really lived under the same roof, they were both very interested in my success in life. And so I take parents very seriously. And honestly, not many video games, you know, do you have parents that are just kind of hanging out? So the kids stuff is kind of cool. Plus they do give you gifts, like they'll give you weapons and, and stuff like that every once in a while. They're actually quite involved in the story, at least so far from what I've seen. So that's kind of cool. And then Wanted, the reason I picked this is because when your health is low, you do extra damage, which uh, works out well for my playthrough. As far as like uh, mercenaries coming after me and trying to kill me, in 15 hours, I've only seen them show up once. And even then, I'm not even sure if it was them. It could have been something else story related. So as far as like mercenaries showing up to kill you and then you can steal their ship and their guns and loot their bodies and stuff like that, that actually doesn't happen very often. Again, maybe once in 15 hours have I seen them show up. So something to keep in mind with that. And let's finish this. Now for the player name, I used my real first name, which is Ben. And I picked this last name because it's a Codsworth spoken name. So I figured if Codsworth can say it, I don't know why Vosco can't. And as it turns out in the several playthroughs that I've done, it turns out Vosco can actually say both of these names. So I think it's safe to assume that any names that Codsworth could have said, Vosco should be able to say at least that, if not more. So this is what I picked. And if you have a first and a last name that are both uh, spoken words for Vosco, he will refer to you by your last name, which is kind of cool. And I think we are done. Let's get into it. Kind of ironic seeing a former combat medic out for the count with a head injury. But hey, it's what you signed up for. Well, you got the sample. Client's on his way, then we all get paid. You remember anything that happened? What the hell was that? It's our payday, that's what. Sooner we get it off our hands, the sooner it isn't our problem anymore. There was this light and music? Huh. Well, you passed out, that's for sure. Everything else, probably just your brain playing tricks. Either way, we got what we were looking for. All this trouble for that stupid thing? Sure don't look like much. Never mind what it looks like. It's worth more than this mine has pulled in all month. We'll be... Speak of the devil. Sure, completely discount what happened to me. That's cool. Never underestimate Bethesda's ability to leave junk laying around. Whoa. You don't Our look good. constellation contact is on approach. Wait. The Explorers Group? <laughs> I thought they were kind of a joke. Not a joke. You're just too young to know better. Hey, I'm just saying they got a reputation. Hell, I bet half the crew here doesn't even believe they really exist. Half the crew doesn't believe Earth exists, but it's still there. Same with Constellation. Yeah, but come on. Exploring space? <laughs> Who does that anymore? Ain't the space we've already got complicated enough? Not to them, apparently. All right, Dusty. Airlock. Put your helmet on.
I always thought this part was kind of cool. It was sort of the same as wandering out of the vault for the first time in a Fallout game. The first time I saw this, I was like, whoa, this is craziness. There's a lot to complain about with this game, and we'll talk about that in future videos, but... You, I don't know. There's just something about it. It's just so cool to see all this. are a bit more sophisticated now, huh? So, you found something? Right here. The new guy found it. That right. And everything went cool? Just like grabbing those minerals on Bendy? Kazal. And no Barrett. Not cool. He passed out after the extraction. Woke up saying all kinds of nonsense. Is that right, cowboy? Went on a trip, huh? Something like that. <laughs> that fun, huh? Not the most gentle push into the great mysteries of space, but hey, been there. Look, just hand over the credits, and I'll be happy to never see this thing, or you, ever again. That's why I like you, Lynn. All business. Barrett, the scanners on the frontier are reporting a ship coming in hot from orbit. I really thought I'd lost them. For some reason, I was thinking Vasco was going to be smaller. I'm not sure why, but he ended up being bigger than I thought he would be. I hated this gun. I got rid of this the, the soonest I got a better one. Anyway, I'm just gonna run right up here, don't mind me. Don't mind the suck. Actually, I'm doing better than I was before. Oops. Went into loot mode. <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't friendly fire, that would have been bad. Man, I suck. Is that it? Always loot the bodies. Don't forget to loot the bodies. Actually, the way this game deals with you being over encumbered is a lot. Oh, that sucks. The way this game deals with you being over encumbered is uh, a lot better than Fallout 4. So, in Fallout 4, if you were over encumbered, you would basically force you to walk extremely slow uh, until you like upgraded that part like you had a, a skill point upgrade in like uh, strong back I think is what it was but in this game if you're over encumbered it will just use up your oxygen like you can still run and even sprint when you're over encumbered and you could be thousands of pounds over encumbered and still 
move around fairly easily, so a huge improvement uh, in that regard. I, I honestly don't think you even need to uh, to upgrade uh, those skill point areas, to be honest with you. Alright, let's get this over with. Of course Barrett was being followed. Well, Every that time. was some fine work on the pressure. You dug up the artifact, right? That means you saw it. The visions? You're coming with me to Constellation. You're part of this now. Oh, wee wee. Oh, wait. I didn't ask for this crap. Hey, um... I wasn't gonna bring it up, but we don't exactly know what the artifact might have done to your head, and Constellation is really the only group qualified to help. Oh, no, Barrett. No. I know what I'm gonna do to your head. You're just going to take off after the mess you caused? Not her, right. him. I guess I did just put you all on the Crimson Fleet hit list. How about I stay and I send your Dusty here in my place? I, 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 I know, I know, but he's not some miner anymore, Lynn. Soon as he touched that rock, something changed. Don't tell me you can't feel it. Fine. It's a deal. Get out of here, Dusty. You're on to bigger things. No way, I don't want to be a part of this. Don't you get it? You don't have a job here anymore. You're with those explorers now. Like it or not. Just go, alright? Figure out what happened to you when you touched that rock. Well, none of that's settled. Vasco, get him to the lodge. No deviations unless absolutely necessary, okay? Protocol Indigo. Indigo? Again. Very well. Oh, and hey, take this. You'll find it very useful out there. And it even tells the time. It's so pretty. Hey, look at that. The watch fits you perfectly. Now, questions? Are you kidding? I got all kinds of questions. Why was the Crimson Fleet after you, first of all? They're just following the loot, like pirates do. And I have something of a reputation as a loot collector. What exactly do we just dig up? That, my friend, is the million credit question. And Constellation can find the answer. With your help. Who are you? What is Constellation? See, that's the problem with the settled systems. Too easy to take everything for granted. While everyone else is busy playing politics, we're the ones braving the unknown, charting the vastness of space. Without us, the galaxy is just a big room with the lights turned out. Why me? Shouldn't you be the one going? Come on. You're really not at all curious about that light and music show you experienced? Why it only affected you? Because if you didn't notice, we've all been handling it since with no problem. The way I see it, Constellation needs that artifact, but they also need you. This mystery is only getting bigger each step we take. And you're part of it now. Honestly, no. I wasn't that worried about the lights and the music. I just figured it was ayahuasca. So wait, wait, wait. You're just giving me your ship? Technically, it's not even mine. Consider it alone. Vasco will keep you on course. Besides, I'm making an exception, since you can tell Constellation about that vision you had. Well, bye then. And Vasco, don't let him break my ship. <laughs> We're still in one piece. All right, bucket of bolts, let's get out of here then. Let's just take a minute to take all this in, because this ship is bigger than it looks. I was playing around in the ship builder, and, like, you can actually make this thing smaller, which is crazy. <laughs> it's crazy that you can do that, but anyway. Just up the ramp, Captain. I'll be in the external robotic today. Captain Dietrich. I assume you know how to fly a Class A starship. As Barrett likes to say, it's as easy as learning to ride a bike. I will attempt to boost the shields, just in case there are any difficulties. 
you sure are making a lot of hasty assumptions. There is a ton of detail in these ships. There really is. Like, there's sandwiches laying around, tools laying around. In the bathroom, there's, like, toilet paper and soap. Like, they went to a lot of detail in this ship. It's kind of crazy. More notes, coffee cups. And by the way, it doesn't look like this stuff bounces around like in Fallout 4. Like, you can walk by it and it doesn't send it flying across the room. It's kind of a, uh, almost like a native OC decorator kind of situation going on. Like, so it's kind of cool that you can walk by this stuff and it doesn't send, like, dishes and, you know, pots and pans and anything static just, like, flying around the place. I really do uh, think that's a nice touch. Okay, let's go in here. I'm guessing this is where crew members go to, like, add uh, stats to your ship. Because at the moment, the only people I have on my crew are the Adoring Fan and Sarah Morgan in my current playthrough. Like, Vasco isn't even on the ship anymore, which I should probably put him in it. But, uh, but yeah, I, I just thought that was interesting that there's these jump seats here that don't do anything when I sit in them, but when other characters sit in them, I think you're supposed to get boosts from them, depending on what skills they have. Alright, let's go into the pilot seat and let's get the hell out of Dodge. Shields ready. The rest is up to you. And I think that is going to be the video for today. Let's take off and go into the vastness of space. Questions, comments, put them in the comment section of the video. Otherwise, until next time, this is Halfway Nuts telling you, don't go nuts. That is my job. I'll catch you later.